Okay, welcome class. Um, this is the second video for the review um, PowerPoints. You'll notice that this is, a this is where I left off. We had already covered the logical fallacies that were on the previous one, and making sure that you are prepared for those is important, um, as well as the literary devices that I had discussed in the previous video. So today we're going to focus on the li literature review. I had said that there are three main pieces that you need to focus on. Um, the reason I say those three pieces is because it gives you a variety um, in the structure, in the topic, in the themes, and in the time period. So it actually gets you there. It doesn't mean that these three things are going to be on the test, but it gives you the idea of if you can understand this type of complex piece of literature, you're going to do better because you can focus on those types of the types of complex pieces that they're going to ask you about as well. So my suggestion is to reread these, to just get them refreshed in your brain so that you have the idea that you can read something like that. Okay, so the first one is Letter from Birmingham Jail, um, the idea that it's Martin Luther King Jr., knowing the soaps, some historical context um, from the time period, knowing the 1960s, but also focusing on the idea of that it's something that's community related and that it's something racism related. Uh, the next thing we have is a modest proposal. This is the one that you guys all loved so much. Um, and I know that's completely being sarcastic, uh, but this is the Jonathan Swift one where he was um, suggesting that and proposing that the Irish sell their babies to the British landlords. Um, again, knowing 1700s, you are going to get at least one historical piece. You will also have something that has to deal with sac sarcasm or satire. So this helps you with the historical and this helps you with the sarcasm and satire aspects. Okay, the last piece of literature uh, is the Declaration of Independence. This helps you on a couple of levels uh, because not only is it the 1700s, but you also have the politics, but you also have the fact that it's a famous document. So we don't often see a lot of the famous documents. So this gives you a different perspective uh, within it, even though it is two pieces that are from the 1700s. One is very Irish, one is very American. Okay, important concepts that you need to be aware of and looking at. Uh, that We talked about this idea of needing to understand transcendentalism. Like I said in the video that you watched over the weekend, that um, transcendentalism will show up either on my test or it will show up on the AP US history. So it's important here that you focus on that. The time period here is wrong. It's actually mid 1800s. Uh, so please note that um, on your uh, notes when you're taking them, but the idea of the focus of nature, the description, the imagery, the analysis that takes place and how it affects humans, um, satire, humor, and sarcasm will show up on the test. It'll show up either in visuals, it'll show up in a historical document, uh, much like the Swift piece, and knowing about the three different types of irony is important. Visual analysis. We have done a lot of visual analysis this year. And we will definitely do some more in the next coming weeks. So I suggest looking over some of the pictures in your textbooks. Specifically, if you look at the color paged ones in the middle of the book, uh, it actually gives you a better sense of the, the color and the dynamic. And then ask yourself some questions from pages 132 to 134 as a way to review how to analyze the visuals. Okay, some main themes that we have covered a lot this year, this idea of gender, community, economy, and education. Gender, we have the stereotypes, the male, female, the roles. We talked about that idea of um, I want a wife and that role that women play. Um, and we also talked about this, actually we didn't really talk about the scientific evidence, um, but knowing that evidence does not necessarily match the stereotypes and what people say about them. Community, uh, the idea of what it's like to be part of a community, what different types of communities look like, and knowing that it's not just race and gender, but we also have socioeconomic status, school, different locations, um, different friendship levels, age groups, all of that fits into the idea of community. Economy, um, don't worry about the macro and micro, um, but worrying about the idea of economy and how it's shaping our system, looking at the Great Gatsby cartoon fits into that idea here, and then also talking about this idea of socioeconomic status, that's the idea of how much money um, the people have and how that affects the piece of literature itself. And the last one we have is this idea of education, how people have the varied levels, how they have different interests, and how they have different styles of learning. Okay, so that's it for that one. Um, now, welcome to Grammar Week. Um, I know this is really what everybody wants to, 
to get to, and I know that Lilith is probably going to really enjoy this week. Now, this is grammar review, kind of with a twist. Okay, so you will notice that two of the topics up here are review, um, numbers one and three. So we have titles, and we have sentence structures. Um, now, the pronouns and antecedents and the parallelism are kind of new. Well, the pronouns and antecedents I know are new, but the number four, the parallelism, um, might be kind of a refresher for you. So right now I'm going to focus on titles. The next two slides are going to look very similar to what we went over at the beginning of the year, but I need you to refresh it in your brain. And instead of having you go back and watch a previous video, I'm going to basically re-lecture. And you are going to have a grammar test um, either Friday of this week or Monday of next week. Part of that depends on timing of activities and stuff within um, school. So being aware of that is important. I'm shooting for Friday the 15th. Okay, so titles. So first of all, we have this idea of punctuating titles. Um, we've talked about the idea of capitalizing the beginning letter of a certain aspects. You got the first word, the last word, and all other important words. Um, capitalization is not necessarily something I was worried about with the class. I worry more about the next aspect of the underlining, the italics, and the quote marks because I still get a lot of questions about that. Um, but knowing the idea of the what is not capitalized unless it is a first word or a last word. So making sure you understand that and knowing fanboys, uh, it keeps showing up. So it's important that you know that. Some samples. So I want you to write these down in your notebook really quick and go ahead and pause if you need to, but I want you to write these down and capitalize these appropriately. So go ahead and pause for a moment, write them down, and then we'll go over the answers in just a moment. But I'm going to pause and take a drink and then I'll start with the answers. Okay, so looking at the answers here, um, we're looking for what needs to be capitalized. So here, paragraph, high, and school should all be capitalized. Let me change the width of this. Okay, and then for the next example, we have A, writers, and then reference. The A is capitalized because it's a first word aspect and the four isn't capitalized because it's in the coordinating conjunctions list of what not to. And then we have into the wild. So we have the into and the wild. Normally into is not capitalized because it's a preposition. Uh, so it fits in with the short prepositions, but because again, it is a first word, it fits in with that. Okay. So this, you'll probably remember this graphic. Um, italics is the same thing as underlining. Um, so all of these ideas, when you underline them, is when you are handwriting them. When you italicize them, it's when you're typing them. So that idea of this is the whole aspect, or the whole piece of literature, or the whole pie, I like to look of it. And this one is the piece of the pie. So it's a part of one of these. So each of these goes in quotation marks because they're a part of a whole. So remembering that is important. Um, okay, so tonight's homework. Okay, so tonight's homework is wordly wise um, 14 CND. It's obviously the video. And then I want you to review the concept so far because something might happen tomorrow in class. So being prepared for that is important. Have a good night and I will see you later.